Okay, welcome back. Um, today, I just thought I'd run you through making your own mould. So, like for like a river table type mould, like that. So, it's one I've done earlier today. Now, first off, you'd need some melamine board. Well, that's what I've got. I've already pre-cut mine, and depending on how big you want it is to how far you've cut it. I'm roughly going for about 30 by 45 at the moment because that's what I've got to work with. So keeping that in mind, you'll need a few things to get this going. Some screws, clamps, a little bit of water with dishwashing liquid, some silicon and a drill and a screwdriver because you're pre drilling your holes just makes life easier. So, what I like to do, I have cleaned these, I just feel a little dirty, is put a little silicone underneath my joints to hold, help hold it together. And it also adds that extra layer of protection for leakage as well. So, because my husband is actually a plumber and he always tells me the silicon you can't see does more than the silicon you can see. So you've got to excuse me today, guys. I feel like I've got a bit of hay fever still. Getting over a cold as well. So always horrible. So what I do is I put like a bead of silicon down along where you're going to put your board. and keep it a constant nice bead happening. I should have cut the nozzle off this a little bit. Such is life. Anyway. Okay. Then what I like to do is get me board, put him down where I want him. Right along the edge there. Because the first one's always the hardest to get on. So just keep that in mind. So your clamps are just to help hold it until you can get your screws in. So that as you're lining up your clamp, just make sure your board hasn't moved a little bit because that's the last thing that you want. just like that and as you can I'm not sure if you guys can see there a little bit of silicon comes out here that's okay you'll have some come out the back as well <clears throat> yeah I'm not sure if you guys so like I said <clears throat> Making a mess on my table with silicon. <laughs> you can go there. <coughs> yeah, they're the same size, I believe. Um, not quite. Anyway, most of these ones will do. <clears throat> so you just want to pre-drill where you're going to put it in, just like that, because it's a bit hard to drill through a little 
screw it in straight away. I'll do that bottom one when I flip it over. Now after you've got them pre-drilled, you just want to go through, oh whoopsies. I'll whack him in like that. Now the more love you give to this, the more useless you'll get out of it. So hopefully two to three pours maybe. Turn that around. this stage you can actually just take your clamps off. I didn't put that one in right did I? There we go. Now this is where finger a little bit and just run along the seam. This is the silicon that you've pushed out of your join. So like I said, don't think of it as a bad thing or that you know you've wasted a lot of silicon because when it comes to your pour you don't want it to leak. So I'd rather waste a little bit of silicon now than a whole lot of resin later and have it leaking. Now I always just squish it into the hole and then go along and clean. And I, I only try and clean it like that for my benefit because I end up touching silicon everywhere and I get it over everything. So. I don't know how hubby can do it all the time being a plumber. But anyway, I tend to nick off and use his silicon all the time. So I'm surprised he hasn't shot me yet. So I'm just like that. Now, again, don't worry too much with the sides, insides here, if they're not like there, if they're not completely full, because you're going to go along later. And re silicon it along and make sure it's going to have no leakages. Now, what I'm going to do is put on the sides the two short sides and then I'll go and do the long side. And um, it will be happy days. So I'll come back to you when I've got that done and we'll silicon the inside. Okay, I thought I'd bring
bring you back to do the last side. I'm not sure how well you can see for being over there, but oh well, we'll just go with the flow. Now, as you can see, I'm just silicon both sides. Put on the last side. As I'm doing this, I like to drill the sides first just to make sure it's going to pull together. see that I might just bring you back a little bit again there we go sorry about all that wiggle wiggle you back this time and we're going to just lie on the inside some has come out I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that has come out when you use the silicone on the inside which isn't a bad thing but then you've got gaps like this one see there's no silicone right there or right there so I always go back over the inside of it just to make sure the last thing you want is all your resin running out and not staying put. Um. Not sure you can see the side that I'm actually doing right now, but just putting a little bead along the edge. Never really good at 
bit silly, Ken. I always ask my husband to come and give me a hand with this part, but I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't want to help her. <laughs> oh, I suppose. Got to do it myself, don't I? Best off to do it yourself, I think. Because if hubby done it for me and he wasn't home and I needed it done, I wouldn't know, would I? Always gives me useful little tips though. That's good. Make a good team. He puts up with my crazy. I put up with his mess. This side doesn't really need any there. You know, do it anyway. Now for this one, I always like to keep my hand dry and just wipe it off on a bit of paper towel. Because you're trying to push it in to the edge. So, just like that. Another little, little edge there. Now if you don't think there's enough in one spot, any leftover that you do have on your finger at the time, it's probably best to run back over and redo it. Hmm. So there it is guys, that's all you have to do. I'm just going to do that part because you can't really see that part anymore. And that's how you make a little tray. If you stay tuned for another video, you'll see what comes of these trays that I've made. <laughs>